I think we're I think we're ready to roll. So if you guys don't, I mean, obviously you should already know who's who's coming next. But if you don't know, Jeremy Forcier is out in California. You see him everywhere online. He's running a hundred million plus mortgage team and uh, just super respected in, in the industry. Super appreciate you for being here, Jeremy. Oh, my pleasure, man. Thanks for thanks for having me. It's an honor, and I, I look forward to sharing some simple stuff. I hope and answer any questions that you or anyone may have. Awesome. So what I'll do is I'll pin your video. If you guys have questions for Jeremy while he's chatting, go ahead, drop them in the comments and uh, we'll make sure that we moderate those questions over to him. And uh, yeah, man, take it away. Awesome. Yeah. So please, uh, if you are watching this, ask questions. It's the best way to learn. Like it's my favorite way to do anything like this. So I encourage you to just ask anything. I don't care. You can ask me what I'm going to eat in about 10 minutes. DoorDash is right there. Okay. You can <laughs> ask me whatever you want. All right. So, um, what I want to speak on today is duplicating your pipeline. Okay. And, and I think that we, we all get so confused, um, me included. Uh, we all get so distracted with volume goes up 300% in a 40 day time frame. How do we handle it? What do we do? How do I keep prospecting? And then we, there's this anxiety of like, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing because you're dealing with so much more work, right? Cause workload has gone up so much. So we're going to talk about a really easy way to duplicate your pipeline with what you already have. All right. And it's the easiest way to keep the momentum going with the least amount of effort in my personal opinion, just because it's what I'm doing. There's lots of different ways to do things. So I'm not going to say that this is the only way because that's stupid. Okay. But this is the way I'm doing it. And I hope that you take something away from it. So there's really two parts, you know, to this, the first part, goes back a few years when I was feeling very disgruntled. Um, I probably wasn't being the best leader, um, husband or loan officer just because I was overworked and I wasn't grounded right in my mind. And I had a great mentor of mine pull me back about four and a half years ago. Um, his name's Roy Mason, fantastic guy. And he's a preacher and uh, he gets on the phone with me and he said, listen, man, you need to practice the three G's. And then he added a fourth one. I'm going to go through them real quick. Okay, so he said, you really need to practice, number one, your gratitude, right? I think we all know that, but do we practice it daily? Do we have a habit around doing it daily? So he sent me this five-minute journal. It's a simple gratitude journal. Write down three things you're grateful for, three things that would make today great, and one affirmation. So I've been doing that for four and a half years. And I will tell you, at first I thought it was foofy voodoo. And then I was like, oh my gosh, this has completely changed me as a human being in the way that I communicate and my own anxiety levels, because it's impossible to feel a positive and a negative emotion in the same time. It's impossible. Okay. So if you write down something that you're grateful for, you can't feel any negative anything. So he said, you got to be grateful. The second thing he told me is that you have to be generous, right? He, he called me out he said, I think that you are selectively generous based on what your perceived benefit is. It hit me like a dagger in the heart because I don't want to be that person. And to have a mentor of yours call you out on that and just tell you, and I was like, hey, I'm listening. <laughs> You're probably right, right? Otherwise you wouldn't have told me that. So number two is making sure, right? That you're being generous to be generous, right? To give, to give, giving, has a lot of different shapes, a lot of different forms, a lot of different medians. You can be giving of your time, right? So I try to be as generous with my time as I can while still protecting my time, right? Be as generous as I can with time. Money is one. Uh, doing a good deed is another one. Uh, donating food, being involved in your community, but just be generous in general, okay? Which I'm sure Michael just talked about before me. The third one, was the one that was really difficult for me. And it's something that I have to work on because I go in and out of it constantly. And that's being gracious, practicing grace. Okay. So he said, he told me that, you know, the reason why it's so hard to practice grace all the time is because if you think, if you know you're right, right, <laughs> then it's hard to give grace sometimes, especially in a business environment, right? Or a client saying that, hey, I got quoted 1.2% on a 30 year fixed. Why am I? Why are you at three and a quarter or whatever, right? And you, you don't want to practice graciousness in that moment. You want to hit them over the head with a hammer, right? And, but, but learning grace that that's allowing people, right? To, you're giving some, someone something they don't deserve is the definition. Okay, giving someone something 
that they don't deserve. That's grace. So when I started practicing grace more and more, I was less angry, more calm, and I was able to have more impactful situations. And rather than be irritated, understand what this other individual's fear or irritation was. And it's usually fear, okay, 99% of the time. When someone is saying something silly or they're acting out, whether it's my kids or but work specifically, because that's what this is about, um, it's because they're afraid of something. I wasn't very good at that, and I still have to work on it all the time, but that is a magic potion right there, okay, is being uh, gracious, giving people grace, everyone that you talk to. Now, he added a fourth G for me because, you know, I guess he thinks that I can be better all the time. About a month ago, going through this COVID-19 stuff, I was explaining some of my stresses to him, et cetera, and he said, you know what, I think we need to add a fourth G, and I said, great, what is it? He said, you need to be gentle with people right now. Okay, you need to be gentle. And man, once again, hit me right in the heart. And I was like, he's right. People are freaked out right now. They are reading so much stuff that the economy could collapse. The, the, these people are afraid. I'm blessed to be able to still be working. And go. I'm in my office right now, quarantined in my office, by the way. Everything's good. I've only gone to the grocery store, my house, and my office for 34 days. Okay, so it, it but he's right. Like there, we have to be gentle with people. We have to take a little bit of extra time to listen to how they're feeling. What a forbearance really is. Are you gonna have to have the same conversation 500 million times? Yes, you are. But guess what? That's what makes you awesome. And that's what makes you better at owning your content when you are having the same conversations over and over and over again, and you are practicing grace, and you are being generous with your time, and you're grateful for the opportunity that you have. So it all starts with the four Gs, okay? It's a mindset first, all right? Now, when we take that and we move into, well, how do you duplicate your pipeline right now? Just like all of you, I, my pipeline's swollen, right? It, it is like a, a snake ate a pig whole, and the pig's just kind of working its way down. You, you guys can picture it, right? It takes a long time for that thing to digest and get through the big giant snake. It's the same for me, you know, as it is for all of you that are watching this and all of the loan officers that work for me too, outside of my personal production. It, we have to be patient right now, but we also have a huge opportunity to duplicate your pipeline in a very easy, simple, scaled way. So let's talk about what I'm doing with that. They're called CCRs, okay? CCRs stands for Current Client Referrals. It's people that you are already working with. It doesn't, they have not closed a loan yet. Okay, so I'm gonna say that again. They have not closed their loan with you. They are in your pipeline. You've just sent them disclosures all the way through closing. That is what the current client referral time frame is. And I will tell you that I have gotten 40 current client referrals in the last 45 days. So I've gotten 40, I'll say it again, referrals from people that I'm already working with that I have not closed their loan yet. Okay, it's super, it's the easiest thing to do. Why is it so easy? Number one is you have to set right expectations. Okay, so up front, I'm having a conversation with these people and Nick, I mean, here's what people are telling me right now, right? So if you called me right now, this is what, 90% of people are saying to me, hey, I'm sure you just, you must be so busy right now. Like that's the first thing that they say almost 100% of the time. And I'm always like, no, I'm here to talk to you. Yeah, we're helping lots of people. Things are great, but this is, this is what I do for my job. So they're already afraid from the get-go that you're too busy to help them and they're a nuisance. Okay, so you have to set the right expectation up front that no, this is how we do our work. We're gonna make sure that we give you great advice. How can I help you today? My favorite script of all time, by the way. Tell me, how can I help you? And I shut up, okay? And I take down all the information. Setting the right expectation with them of what to expect during the process. What, you know, what do appraisal waivers mean? What's that gonna mean to you, whether you're purchasing or refinancing? Um, here's the strategy on rates right now. For me personally, let's not lock anything in until the loan's fully approved so we can look at a short-term lock and get you the best possible price. I'm gonna give you a range of rates. You're gonna receive disclosures at X rate, but once again, we're gonna review this once your loan's approved and make sure that we can give you the best possible benefit and you can choose whatever's gonna work best for you. Outlining simple stuff like that makes them feel comfortable and confident. 
Okay? People want to feel comfortable and they want to feel confident in the person that they're working with. What they don't want is wishy-washy and what they don't want is you, you know, being so, the market expert that goes on a 35 minute narrative as to like why there's a margin call and this, that, and the other. Okay. That's just, I'm just telling you, people don't really care. Okay. It's important for you to know though. Okay. It's important for you to know that information. That's why like MBS highway and rate watch and all those different apps are so critical. That way, if someone does ask a specific question, you, you do have the information, but don't just launch into it. Okay. Into a sales pitch. They want to feel confident in you and they want to feel comfortable to whatever the next step is. Now we explained to everyone, Nick up front that, listen, what I really could use is your help, right? So there's two different ways we could do that. Number one is that I need you to fill out this all about you form, which I'm happy to share with you guys. Okay. When we send it at initial loan application where they're filling out simple stuff like, are they married? Do they have kids? Where did they go to college if they did? What's their favorite type of movie? Do they have a favorite movie? What type of candy do they like? What's their favorite place to eat out? Simple stuff like that, right? And we say in the email template, which once again, I'm happy to share with you guys, like, you know, we want to treat everyone like a VIP because you're very important to us. We'd love to gift you throughout the process so it's easy for us to know a little bit about you. We just tell them it's no secret of what we're going to do. And then guess what? 30% of them fill it out. Fantastic. Okay. And then you can send them cool stuff like milk duds if they like milk duds. And that is special. That shows you're paying attention. Okay. Now the second thing that we do is that we have a form called, we could use your help. Right. And we explain to them that on this form that, listen, we can only work at a very high level and serve a certain amount of people, people just like you. Right. So if you could send us two people that could use our help now or in the future, we would love to serve them as well. Pretty simple stuff, right? 25% of people give you a name and a number just on this form. Yeah. Hey, my brother, you know, Robert, he, I think that he could benefit from this too. Great. We haven't even done a loan yet. You guys, we're, we're still at like pre qual stage. Okay. Now, um, here's the big ones though. Okay. Of how you can duplicate those ones. You'll get some okay results. Um, when people don't fill it out, by the way, I don't hound them at all. It's just a one and done. If they want to fill it out, great. If, if they don't, it's not, it's, there's no pressure at all. It's just showing them how I run my business okay, and what's important to me and what, what I would like from it. Now, during your transaction, okay, what we don't do is ask for referrals during the transaction. We all, we wait till the end, till it's over. But there's a big problem with that, Nick. They don't need us anymore at the end. They don't need, and that's not like a diss on us or on them. It's just a reality that they don't need us. <laughs> they bought the car, they got the house. They, we're not top of mind anymore, right? We're just, we're just not, we're not important to what their goal was over that 30 day time frame that we were serving them. So I have picked four celebration points to ask for referrals. Okay, so everyone should pick two to four celebration points. I have four. It doesn't mean I ask them four times, by the way. These are just my reminders to myself, right? That I should be asking for a referral. The reason why we only ask at celebration points, remember I'm a simple person, is because they're happy, okay? Celebration equals happy. So uh, my celebration points are very simple. Number one, you were pre-approved, okay? So pre-approved to me, um, is someone on a purchase who has got their documents in and I've issued a pre-approval letter on a refinance. It's someone who has taken a loan application and I've credit qualified them. Those are both pre-approved to me. Okay. That is a great time to ask for a referral. Now, an easy way to do that is you call them. Hey, Nick, congratulations. You're pre-approved. Nick says, that's awesome. Do you have any questions about the process or what the next steps are? And I'm just paraphrasing this and moving quickly. We'd have a, a dialogue and I'd say, hey, Nick, I was wondering if you could help me with something. Nick would say, sure. By the way, I've never asked someone for help and have anyone say no. Okay. So it doesn't mean you're going to get a referral. It just means that people want to help people. I want you guys all to write that down. People innately want to help each other if you ask for help. Okay, so I say, I, want, I was wondering if you'd help me with something. I'm looking to work with more people I like, people just like you. Who do you know that could benefit from a conversation with me now or in the future? 
that I could connect with. Super simple. Okay. Maybe one out of 10 times I'll get a referral from that. But it's super simple. So pre approval. Okay. Second one is conditionally approved. Okay. So when the loan is actually approved from underwriting, it's another celebration point. Same dialogue happens, right? Same dialogue happens. Now remember, you don't have to call at every celebration point and be a psychopath. Don't be literal with what I'm saying. Pick one or two that make sure you're asking at least once and make sure you're using the email that I'll cover at the end every single time, okay? So uh, approved is one. Uh, clear to close is another one that I use. These are very simple things that happen on every single file that we work on, you guys, okay? And then the final one, of course, um, is loan is funded, right? Congratulations, your loan is funded, et cetera. So um, those are the celebration points that I have picked to create a um, opportunity to ask for a referral with someone I'm currently working with. Now, here is the secret sauce, though. The secret sauce, number one, is that when you're having a dialogue with someone, and if they seem even upset or irritated or they're just antsy or they you know, they're nervous, please do not ask for a referral. Like, just don't be that person. I'm, I'm just saying, okay? And if you do, that's okay. But I'm telling you, you won't be nearly as effective as having a little bit of emotional intelligence and just listening to how they're feeling. We want them to feel good and then they'll feel good about giving something, okay? So if someone is upset or they're like, listen, I don't really like the way that this condition is, I'm not gonna talk them through it and go, hey, Nick, Okay, so we're through that. Um, now tell me, can you help me with something? <laughs> and then go into the doc. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. Okay. I've tried it. I'm telling you from failure. Like I was like, nope, I'm gonna do it because I was told to do it this way every single time, no matter what. Guess what? <laughs> there are times when you don't ask for things. Okay. Now here's where you do ask every single time. And I'll share this email template. I'll send it to Nick. Okay. It's saved in my signature, so it's a real easy drop down. So we have automated milestone emails that go out, right? Like, hey, congratulations, you know, your loan docs have been sent to title, you're gonna get an appointment set up, et cetera. And then people respond to that probably 50% of the time. Oh my God, thank you so much. They say anything around thank you, or we're so happy, or you've been so great, anything remotely, even if they just gave me a thumbs up emoji, okay? I will send them back this email that says, we loved helping you. Right, and then it will explain that I want to work with more people I like, people just like you. It's an email version, right? Could you introduce me to two people that could use the same type of service that you've experienced? That's where I got 30 of my 40 CCRs in the last 45 days was from that email, okay? So then that duplicates. I'm gonna use uh, 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 Vance DeVoe as an example, okay? Vance said, yeah. He did it right away before we got to the end. He was like, yeah, hey, you should talk to my son. I think they could, great, talk to him. We had a great experience. I used the email on Eric, his son. He sent me three people, you guys, two of which I am doing a refinance for right now. So use these little tools, these little tips. Make sure you're trying to be uh, thoughtful, gracious, have gratitude, be gentle with people, uh, be generous with your time, ask for the business, make sure you earn it and set the right expectations at the beginning, and I think you'll see your pipeline literally duplicate, and that's a very easy, scalable system to work. Well, wow, that was awesome. I know everybody definitely is excited about your your forms and stuff in the in the comments. So, man, the comments are going crazy right now. <laughs> no, no, no problem. I'll send it to you. I'll send you three different temp, three two PDFs, and then two templates. Awesome. And the four, just so I can make sure I have the four Gs, because somebody was asking about that. Gratitude, generous. Gracious and gentle. That's it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes, sir. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I mean, that, that was incredible. I mean, definitely actionable. I mean, it was really cool. I like, so, so um, what, what exactly, somebody had asked a question early on, which was like, what happened to spark this conversation around these three Gs originally? Um, I think that people can see things in you that you can't see yourself. Mm. Right? And so it's not something I was aware of. All right. It was something that um, someone who had gained my trust over an extended period of time felt comfortable enough to be like, hey, man, I think you're effing up. Right. And I think you're effing up not because you're a bad person, but I think you're a little confused. And uh, he didn't say any of those things, by the way. This is just wisdom in retrospect, looking back. 
Yeah. And he presented it to myself, to, to me. And uh, it, that's the answer, right? Is that don't be afraid when you care about someone, you guys. Like I have a lot of difficult conversations with people that work with me. Um, I have a lot of challenging conversations with customers that I work with, but it's from a really good place. And if you see something that is negatively affecting someone else's life and they can't see it themselves, don't be afraid to raise your hand and gently point it out to them. Because if you communicate that with love, man, they're going to receive it, even if it doesn't feel good at first. So that, that, that's what happened. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. That was an incredible, incredible chat you gave with us right now. I know people are going to have tons of, uh, I know people are going to have tons of comment, you know, comments and, and things to say about it. So America's, America's mastermind, mastermind, the Legion of Loan Officers. America's mastermind for smart mortgage professionals, the Legion of Loan Officers. How we roll. That's how we roll. Triple your business. Yeah. Forget the cold calling. Forget it. Wait until you see this. You soon to be ballin'. Right. Bang, bang, hit it up. Everybody listen. Helping a million Americans become homeowners is the mission. We got realtors coming to you. The Legion of Loan Officers. That's what we do. Ten realtor partners in 90 days for mortgage brokers. Open your eyes and be amazed. Forget that junk you smoking. Relate Relationships, excellence, courage and commitment, integrity, we live it, we staying on the mission, a hundred milli every month, we don't grunt, we just give you what you want, so come on and feel the pump. What? America's mastermind, the smart mortgage professionals, the legion of loan officers.